good evening everybody namaskar i welcome you all to the sixth day of virtual tour of cosmos being organized on the occasion of 31st foundation day celebration of patani samanta planetarium bhuvaneshwar uh, today we have with us sri uh, satish uh, joshi from infovision uh, i'll now request uh, mr satish joshi to kindly start the program uh, today's planetarium show uh, mr satish joshi from infovision please start good evening, sir. good evening sir thank you This way, everyone. That's it. Step up. We depart in just a few minutes. Can I sit by the window, Dad? I want a good view in case we get to see some aliens. You bet. Oh boy! Hey, George. How about getting one of me in front of the bus? Mabel, you don't really expect me to waste film on that tacky-looking bus, do you? Hurry up, everyone. We don't want to be late getting started. <laughs> Welcome aboard the Lifestyles of the Stars Astro Tour. You have selected the unchallenged authority on who's hot and who's not among the stars. Today we're going to canvas the cosmos to bring you face to face with some of the biggest, newest, coolest, and hottest stars in the universe. Each a celestial celebrity in a veritable galaxy of stars. Our Astro Bus is equipped with the latest Tachyon drive system. It's been running a little rough lately, so you might want to buckle up before launch just to be safe. During our tour, we ask that you remain seated and keep your hands, arms, and bodies inside the bus. <laughs> What do you know, Mabel? <laughs> the Tachy Bus has a Tachy drive. <laughs> the Astro Bus navigation system will display our destination, which also happens to be marked on your tour maps. Now prepare for launch in five, four, three, two, one. Our first stop is a place where some of the hottest new stars in the cosmos can be found. What's that glowing space cloud? Oh, that! It's a collection of gas and dust called a nebula. It's rather like a nursery for rising young stars. Oh, baby stars, they're so precious. George, get a picture. Mabel, give me a break. It's not like they're alive. No, stars aren't alive like us, but they are born, do grow old, and like us, do eventually die. So what's it take to achieve stardom? Gas, lots of hydrogen gas. Like the kind that goes in a car? Oh no 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 no! Hydrogen gas is more like what we breathe. You mean air? Yes, air is made up of many different kinds of gases, but there's very little hydrogen gas in the air we breathe. That's because most hydrogen is out in space or is part of a star. So what's it take to become a star? To make a star, hydrogen gas mixes with dust to form a nebula. Then gravity causes the gas and dust to lump together, forming stars of different sizes. You mean stars don't have a solid surface like our planet? They're just big balls of gas. That's right. As each big ball of gas grows greater, the pressures and temperatures at their centers increase, causing all the tiny particles of hydrogen gas, known as atoms, to move faster and faster, carelessly crashing into each other harder and more often until one day, bang! The hydrogen atoms crash together with such force that they stick together to form a new type of atom, giving off heat and light in the process. 
a new star has just been born, and it shines by using up or burning its hydrogen gas. How old are these baby stars? Very young. The stars in this particular nebula started shining only about 300,000 years ago. 300,000 years? I thought these were baby stars. They are. 300,000 years is a very young age for a star. Stars can live for as little as a few million years or as long as many billions of years, depending on how fast they use up their gas. You mean stars are like this astrobus. They work only as long as they have fuel to burn. That's right, and stars are like astrobuses in another way. Big astrobuses don't travel as far in a tank of gasoline as small astrobuses, and big stars don't shine as long as small stars. Big stars and big astrobuses are not very fuel efficient. Then if we can find a small star that's not a gas guzzler, then we might find a really old star. Let's find out. I'll program the navigation system to take us by a small star. Oh, come on, you bucket of bolts. There it is, one of the smallest stars around. Someday, it will be one of the oldest, too. This tiny dwarf star burns its gas so slowly that it may last for 200 billion years. When it finally does run out of gas, it will slowly fade away, becoming a burned out stellar has-been. Oh, George, look, it's so cute. But why is it red? Just as the color of a flame indicates the temperature of the flame, the color of a star indicates its temperature too. Red stars are the coolest, about 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Yellow stars are medium hot, about 10,000 degrees, and blue-white stars are the hottest, about 35,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Of course, these are the surface temperatures of the stars. Stars are many millions of degrees on the inside. Hey, this star isn't on our tour maps. That's because it's too faint. Your tour maps only show bright stars which can be seen from our planet without a telescope. What's happening? The Astrobus Alert System is indicating that this star is a bit, uh, temperamental. It could flare up at any moment. Uh, what do you mean by flare up? I mean that the star could give off a huge burst of gas and energy from its surface. George, quick, get a picture. We're about to be turned into charboiled crispy critters by a stellar flare, and you want a picture? Now, there's no need to panic, folks. We're perfectly safe. The Astrobus radiation shields will protect us from this dim dwarf's deadly flares. You know, I've heard that there's nothing harder to live with than a temperamental star. Look, my daughter really wants to see some aliens. Could we try looking for life somewhere else? Like near a hot star, maybe. Sure, I know just the place. But first, I'll need to program the navigation system. There. Come on, work, you rusting relic. Well, here we are. This is one of the brightest and hottest stars in the sky. You could even say it's a giant in its field. Star field, that is. Oh, how pretty. It's bluish white. Yes, this blue-white giant shines brightly only because it greedily gobbles its gas at a rapid rate. In just a few million years, it will use up its entire fuel supply. But could there be life here? Probably not. The lifespans of giant stars are just too short. Besides, when a giant star nears the end of its brief but brilliant career, it will swell to many times its present size, destroying any nearby planets while cooling and turning red in the process. Whoa, talk about an inflated ego. Uh-oh, time's running short. We'd better get going. Where are we headed? To visit one of the biggest stars in this part of the universe, a true superstar. Hang on. It's Chuck.
volcanic. Cool. Yes, the red color tells us this is a cool star as far as star temperatures go. But it's also a star that has reached the end of its stellar career. One day, very soon, this red supergiant will blow its cool, blasting bits of its bloated body across the cosmos in a colossal explosion called a supernova. It's such a pretty star. Why can't it just keep shining? Stars shine by burning hydrogen gas. The burning gas produces energy which pushes outward from the center of the star, balancing the force of gravity which pulls inward on the star. When very large stars run out of gas to burn, they can no longer produce enough energy to balance the force of gravity, so the star becomes unstable and explodes. <laughs> Sounds kind of like a nervous breakdown. <laughs> In these explosions, huge quantities of star material are blasted into space, creating colorful gas clouds like these. Oh, how pretty! Supernovae play an important role in the cosmos because shock waves from their explosions can trigger the formation of new stars, and the debris they create can find its way into new nebulae to form new stars and new solar systems. Do all stars explode when they get old? No, the lifestyle of a star depends on its size. Small stars burn their gas slowly, live long lives, and just fade from the sky when they run out of fuel. Medium stars burn their gas at an average rate, shine for an average length of time, and eventually burn out when their fuel is gone. Large stars burn their hydrogen fuel very rapidly, live short lives, and usually go out with a bang. But when giant stars explode, they don't always destroy themselves. Usually, the force of the explosion squishes or compresses the central part of the star, changing it into something very strange. Depending on how big the star was before it exploded, it could either become a neutron star or a black hole. Neutron stars are very small and very hot. And because they contain a great deal of matter compressed into a space the size of a small planet, they are also very heavy. A piece of neutron star the size of a sugar cube would weigh a hundred million tons. Awesome! But the strangest objects of all are black holes. Sometimes exploding stars compress so much matter into such a tiny area that the star collapses under its own weight. As the star gets smaller and smaller, its gravity increases until nothing, not even light, can escape from the surface of this dead star. Oh my stars! The Astrobus Earth system indicates that this supergiant is about to blow! This is so exciting! George, get a picture. You You've got, got to, to be kidding! We're about to be demolished by a supernova and you want me to take a picture? We'll have to try to outrun the explosion. Hang on, I'm engaging the tachyon drive. Now, Chucky Chucky. Hurry! Getting closer! I guess we can thank our lucky stars. We made it. Now, to get this busted bus back before I have to call a space tow. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We visited small stars and big stars, cool stars and hot stars, young stars being born and old stars blowing up, but we haven't visited any average stars on this tour. That's because average stars are, well, average. However, if you really want to see one, I'll check the navigation scanner to see if there are any average stars nearby. Ah, there's one. I'll put it on the monitor. See? Like I said, average. It's medium-sized, middle-aged, and quite stable. In fact, this star will probably shine for another, oh, four and one-half billion years before it runs out of gas. Gee, compared to the other stars we've seen, this one's kind of boring. Isn't our own star average? Well, yes. Well, if our own star is average, and it supports life, then maybe this star supports life too. 
you could be right. I'll check the Astrobus Interstellar Electromagnetic Scanner to see if it's picking up anything unusual. Hey, radio waves, and they don't appear to be of natural origin. All right, aliens! The radio signals seem to be coming from the third planet of this star system. I'll run them through the Universal Translator and put them on the monitor. The Karaoke Classic Tape Club features thousands of songs made famous by all your favorite artists. Whether you love the music of country stars like Garth Brooks, great pop stars like Madonna, what odd creatures. They have a very strange idea about what the stars are. Elvis. You know, Dad, I think average stars are the most interesting stars of all. Yeah, their average size and temperature and their stable lifetimes would seem to make them the best kind of star to support life. Can we go visit the aliens? Perhaps another time. Right now, it's time for us to head home. So, on behalf of Cosmic Astro Tours Incorporated, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us on today's Lifestyles of the Stars Tour. We enjoyed having you aboard and hope you'll consider flying with us again very soon. Hey, George, how about taking a picture of me with our Astro Bus driver? Sure thing. You know, Mabel, those creatures sure were different.